أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ولا سيما بقية الله في العالمين وحجته في الأرضين روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء واللعن على أعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين I have learned that Mr. Asrar Rashid has agreed to have a debate with me. However, he has not clarified whether he wants to have a single debate with me on one occasion only, or he has accepted my challenge to have a series of debates on key polemical issues that divide the Shia and the Umri community and have divided the Shia and the Umri community since the dawn of Islam. I, I have proposed that we should have a series of debates on key issues such as the attributes of the deity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we find so many contradictions in the Ash'ari Maturidi and in the Salafi arguments with respect to the attributes and the exalted names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, if the opposing faction has any question with respect to the Shia belief, with respect to the exalted names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would be glad to answer those questions. We would like to know whether Mr. Asrar Rashid has agreed to answer our questions with respect to the questions we have with regard to the character of Abi Bakr and character of Omar and character of Uthman and the holy verses in the noble Quran which are with respect to Aisha. We have many questions with respect to the legitimacy of Khilafah of Abi Bakr and Omar and Uthman. And we wonder why the Umari scholars hide the verses that are in the Holy Quran in condemnation of Sahaba, in condemnation of Aisha and Hafsa. Why they hide these verses from their commonality and from common Omari population. We would like to have a series of debates on these issues, on the question of Quran. We would like to know what are the answers of Mr. Asrar Rashid or any other Omari scholar with respect to the traditions that the Umri scholars hide from the common population that have been narrated from Abi Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Aisha, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ubay ibn Kaab, and other companions that indicate clearly that Quran has been altered. They do not tire of the effort to allege Shias time and again that the Shia believe that the Quran has been altered. Nonetheless, they hide these very very authentic traditions in Bukhari, in Muslim, and uh, their other sources of hadith. They hide them for the, from their population. We would like to have debates on these key issues. We would like to know why the Umri congregation do not submit to the Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the sayings of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with respect to the obligatoriness of following Ahlul Bayt Alayhim Salatu Wasallam. We would like to have debates on the hadith of Thaqalain, on hadith al-Ghadir, hadith al-Manzila, the sayings of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that clearly, without any ambiguity, indicate that Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam is his only heir immediately after him. And Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman and Aisha and all of the other Muslims, they must follow and obey him like the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> and there are other issues and topics, and perhaps there are some topics Mr. Adna Asrar Rashid or other Umari scholars would like to suggest that should be included in those series of uh, discussions and debates that we are going to have. So Mr. Asrar Rashid has to clarify whether he has accepted my challenge to have a, to have a series of debates with me on these key topics that divide us. And if it's agreed so, please, he has to indicate so. If he has not agreed so, then other Omari scholars, if they are man enough, they should come forward and face me and have debates with me on this subject. Now, with respect to the 
most recent uh, message of Mr. Asrar Rashid. He has set up some dates, October 29th and November 5th, 2016. While we do not have any problem with these dates, Mr. Asrar Rashid should know that we have no obligation to accept to face him on these dates. Though we do not have any problem with facing him on these dates, and if, as, as I indicated before, if Mr. Asrar Rashid ha wants to have only one debate with me, that's fine too. If he wants to have a series of debates with me, that's better. That's better. That's what I, I would like to have with him. But if he is going to have only one debate with me on November 5th or October 29th, then he has to clarify what is the subject of the uh, discussion. And... Uh, he should discuss with me and seek my opinion whether I agree to have a debate with him on that subject or not. Likewise, what his rules and conditions are going to be for that debate and what's my, what, what is going to be my opinion with respect to those rules and conditions. As I've indicated before, I would agree to any rule, any condition, any requirement for debate. Mr. Asrar Rashid should propose so long as his proposed rules and conditions do not hinder the very occurrence of a fair, honest, and educated and scholarly debate. Nonetheless, they have to be clarified beforehand, and both parties need to agree on those rules and conditions and on the timing, and has to be on paper and signed by both parties. I look forward, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, to present the global English-speaking audience with sound and undeniable arguments with respect to the Shia position in regard to Imama, in regard to Isma, infallibility of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu was salam, and with respect to illegitimacy of the Khilafah in Imama, in rulership of Abi Bakr and Omar and Uthman, and with respect to so many so many other topics that Omari scholars hide from, their, from the, their population and the poor and pitiful Omari congregation are not aware thereof. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa lana adaahum. Thank you for your time.